welcome to this uh, Friday devotional. My name's Mike and I'll be leading you through this session today. Uh, the reading is Ephesians 2 verses 11 to 22. It's a quite a long one. And it says this, don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. You did not know the covenant promises God had made with them. You lived in a world without God and without hope, but now you have been united in Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself brought peace to us, he united Jews and Gentiles into a one people when, in his own body, on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between the Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross and our hostility towards each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of you can come to the, the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Well, I had a, it's quite a long passage and I've uh, had a look at this and I guess my focus is going to be on the last section about the Gentiles being no longer strangers and the house being built on one foundation. Because this passage to me, this bit, is about being different but yet tied together under the same common entity but one thing is clear here i think the jews are still the jews and the gentiles were still the gentiles it's just that the barrier between them had been breached and jesus had ensured that they were included so what is jew or gentile or to bring it up to date what is british or french or english or welsh or scottish well, in the Old Testament, we read much about tribes, and in particular, the 12 tribes of Israel. So what is a tribe? The dictionary definition is as follows. A group of people, often related families, who live in the same area, who, se who share the same language, culture and history. So we are brought together by three important factors, our language, our culture and our shared history. So what can we learn about tribes or people groups? Well, unity, first of all, is strength. One of the most successful people groups is the, is the United States. As the, as the name suggests, the country consists of a series of smaller entities, the states, who work together under a common creed or purpose. As a consequence, they have become a superpower with much world influence. A similar arrangement is in place on a much smaller scale in the UK with England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Number two, disunity is weakness. Let's look back at the United States for a moment and look back to the 6th of January this year when the Mile and the Hill in Washington, D.C. were witness to an insurrection and the invasion of the Capitol building by demonstrators, essentially brought together by a series of lies. But people genuinely and passionately believing those lies. So we see there a division in the United States which has now weakened them. In the UK, we are seeing similar things with the people of Scotland clamouring for independence and some no longer seeing themselves as members of the larger tribe. The 80s pop group, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, I thought you'd never hear this on a, a devotional session, 
captured the difference in their second and third hits of 1984. They sang, when true two tribes go to war, a point is all you score. And then they followed it up with the remedy. The power of love, a force from above, make love, not war. And that's about all I can quote from Frankie Goes to Hollywood in these morning sessions. So for a tribe to survive and thrive requires love, unity, a unity of purpose and mutual respect for each member and also identity. Tribes do shift their focus. They form and break up. The 12 tribes of Israel essentially became one entity as the Jews. On the 3rd of October 1990, another unifying event occurred when East and West Germany were forcibly, after forcibly being separated in 1945, came back together. The efforts to divide this tribe culminated in 1961 with the enforced separation aided by the physical structure known as the Berlin Wall. But tribal unity conquered the structures and they were reunited on that day in 1990. Since 1945, the UK tribe has changed and, and enhanced by new peoples coming to live here and cultures have altered as a result. The rise of the Indian restaurant and the curry have muscled in on the fish and chip shop and the Sunday roast. A curry has become a norm across all people groups. So tribes constantly change and evolve. The Borough Churches website lists all the churches in this area. They are all separate entities, yet the website demonstrates their common membership of a much larger tribe, that of the Lord Jesus. And this demonstrates the glue that holds a tribe together. And that is a strong unif uniting force or leader. Our Lord Jesus is that strong and visionary leader. We all in this tribe have a purpose and a goal. Returning to the passage, what we see here is Jew and Gentile, although different, but now members of a larger overarching tribe. And the reason for this is, G is Jesus, who caused peace and unity to emerge between the Jews and the Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility towards each other was put to death. And they were equals, not one superior to the other. So tribes can be a force for good or evil, but generally I would suggest a mix of the two. Consider for a moment a termite mound. Within that structure, there are tiny creatures who on their own are useless, but as a colony are able to create complex and amazing ecostructures with ventilation, air conditioning, and other many remarkable feats. How do they do it? Well, they work together. One termite on his own is useless, but an army of termites can do mighty things. Each one knows its place and job in the colony, but at the heart of the termite colony is a queen, a unifying figure. And this is what this passage speaks of, where it says, so now you Gentiles are no longer strangers or foreigners. You are citizens among with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together we are his house built on foundations. The apostles, the prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus. We are carefully joined together in him. So just like the termite mound, we all have a part to play in building the house of God. Jesus is this unifying figure, the leader who gives us a common purpose and destiny. We belong to that tribe of believers and by working together, we can achieve great things. But we must know our place in the structure and work in cooperation with others. Welcome anyone in whatever their background and however weak or downtrodden. Believe and promote truth, not falsehoods. Make peace with those around us and do not let the structures divide us. In this passage, it is given as the law command and commandments. And seek to expand our tribe by promoting all that is good 
and that is Jesus. At the heart of our tribe, at the heart of our group, is Jesus. We must never lose sight of that. C.S. Lewis says, do not waste time bothering whether you love your neighbour, act as if you do, and you will presently come to love him. And he also said this, when we Christians behave badly or fail to behave well, we are making Christianity unbelievable to the outside world. Our group must be attractive. We must be a, an attractive proposition if we are to gain more members. As Ruth Odie said on Tuesday, family is not just one group of people, but a vast group, and that's what we are. So let's resolve to invest in our community, in each, in each, in each other, and in this our precious church community. Our nation has suffered much in recent times, but a unifying figure emerged last year from nowhere in the form of Captain Sir Tom Moore, who actually comes from a village called Marston Mortain, which is very close to where I was brought up, so I know that area quite well. He passed away on Tuesday at the age of 100, a thoroughly humble and decent man with an abundance of positivity. He said, you've got to think that things will be better. The future is in front of us all. And without doubt, things will get better. We shall get through this very difficult time. So please remember that tomorrow is a good day and we shall all get through this in the end. And this is what our Christian tribe has to offer, our Christian group has to offer, that tomorrow will be a good day. And ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow is a good day and will be a good day. Let us, as we come to prayer, be like Sir Tom and approach life with optimism and have our glasses half full just as he did. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess and let us spur one another on towards love and good deeds. For he who promised is faithful and if we hold on to those words, we will be a successful community together.